Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to go and see my friend Charlotte. Charlotte. I haven't seen for I don't know when the last time I saw her. Um, basically, we used to do photo shoots together. Um, for probably I don't know, last ten or so years. Um, probably no longer than that, to be fair. And she wants to get into photography. She's always loved it, but she's finding her phone camera now is getting a bit frustrating so she wants you know a dedicated camera as such so I said I'll give her lessons so I'm gonna use the RX10 Mark IV for her today and I'm gonna to use obviously the A1 I'll probably let her use the A1 a bit as well so she can get a real feel for the, the bigger cameras but the RX10 the RX100 and stuff like that is gonna be a good camera to get, get into a bit and learn a bit so um, see how she gets on, see what she thinks really before she starts buying cameras. Um, it, you know, see how she gets on really, see if she really wants, still wants to go ahead with everything. Um, there's so many cameras out there now in the used market as well, it's such a good time to buy. God, I missed all the school traffic. Anyway, we're going to a place called Sheffield Park, which we've been to before loads of times. National Trust property. Um, it's very famous for this sort of time of year. It's more like October, and um, yeah, it's uh, October is where you get all the colours. But we're still sort of greens at the moment. It's starting to go browns in a few places, so we might be all right. Uh, I've just had to take a detour because the road's shut. The normal road there that we normally go on is is closed. So we have to go down the fun twisty road unfortunately. Uh, this car hates twists and bends. Uh, some of these roads are absolutely horrendous. The surfaces are awful. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so it's going to be a good day. The weather's lovely. Um, our options were Monday or Wednesday this week. I looked at the weather today and it was like, oh, actually quite nice. The light's quite nice. A little bit of cloud cover. Uh, Wednesday, torrential rain all day. So I thought, well, yeah, I think today's probably best. Um, I don't know if you can see how hard this car is. I mean, bouncing around in it. <laughs> this road, this road's good fun, but it is a bit lumpy in places. Um. So, after being graced with a, uh, a flyby by these two, we've now got closer to them. Oh, what does that mean? Those puffy, go for the go for the um, the wings. Just zoom in on the wings on the back. That looks really cool. You the detail you get then from that. You love them. Oh, it's not puffing out now. <laughs> Tuck them away. Look at that. But when they puff them out, they look amazing. The detail and everything. Look at his uh, necks all puffed up as well. The ducks. Yeah. Yeah, probably get attacked in a minute. All right. <laughs> Mr. Duck just walked through the legs. Mm -hmm. No. Should we see if we can spot whatever that was going across the lake? Yeah. Oh, that's one. So we've just been photographing the swans and where we were down there about 100 metres or so we could see out in the lake there um, it happened two to three times and I did get a couple of shots something went across very quickly um, but they were in the water not on it um, but we don't know what it is, so I've got a couple of shots. Anybody reckon they might know what it is? Is it a water vole? I don't know how fast a water vole can swim. Um, would they sort of be on the surface splashing around? I don't know, it's weird. Um, let me know if you're a wildlife expert, because I'm not. <laughs> it's, uh, we'll just wait and see if it actually happens again. But how long do you wait? That's the question. So we stopped along here, along this path, and it was 
some kind of stream garden or something, and it was basically just a footpath that ran through, and uh, there was a stream running through and things like that, and it was just quite picturesque actually, as you'll see in a second as we walk down. You'll see that uh, we uh, discover three nice trees, just here on the left-hand side. And I said to Charlotte, what do you see here? And she said, the three trees, but the shadows are quite cool. And I said, well spotted. So it's all about thinking about what you're looking at and does something look attractive to the eye or appealing to the eye? You know, um, do you want silhouetted trees or do you want them balanced, well balanced? Um, do you want the sun glaring into the shot or do you want it behind the tree? There's loads of things that you can think about. So I'm explaining to her about the different settings that we should think about, like the aperture, um, to make sure everything's in focus. Are we going to shoot really wide angle, which she was? Uh, you know, are we going to zoom in on maybe on one tree or whatever? But we decided on the, the shadows of the ground and it was just a learning curve. And she hadn't used this camera before at all. She's not really used a real camera other than maybe a point and shoot or something um, at all. So having a camera like the RX-10, which has obviously full manual capability, like that, I put her straight in the deep end. I showed her a couple of shots with auto and I said, well, let's go straight into manual and I'll explain and show you what we'll do to get the shots and then hopefully that you'll understand. Um, and I explain the basics of photography, the exposure triangle and everything like that. But obviously it takes time to remember. So benefits of these cameras now is that you can see exactly what the exposure is going to be um, live for your viewfinder or on the new screen. So we uh, basically kept snapping away, looking at the shots, and a lot of it was obviously about how you set the shot up, what angles you're using, what angles you're sort of taking at, and also the where the available light is coming from. Is it coming from behind, in front of you, from the side, um, above, you know, etc., etc. So we had lots of different experimentations of different angles, and then you know, um, different. Uh, shots trying to shoot into the sun a little bit um, like the wildlife you saw earlier the, the swans and everything there's also a load of ducks and I was just trying to explain it to her and show her in the real world how you can actually capture stuff she's not going to remember all of it straight away obviously because it takes years to remember everything and it's more about learning and the reason why you're going to be doing something so yeah it's great to experiment yourself but sometimes it's really nice to actually be able to be taught by someone um, who's obviously obviously built up a little bit of experience. So we can see this tree here to the right. You'll see it looks quite cool because it's basically it looks like a big Christmas tree. And it's the one in the center of the image we're looking at, not the one on the left. And I'm now explaining about um, what might look good. And what I asked her what, um, what wouldn't look good. And she pointed out the fact that we're trying to um, utilize the Christmas tree as such as the subject. And when she was at wide angle at 24mm, the tree on the left there, the, the quite barky looking tree, was the subject as such. When she looked through it, it became more dominant than the other tree. So we, she zoomed in a bit and obviously got rid of that tree. Um, but still managed to actually get the other uh, tree in full just about. So basically, sometimes you might have to crop later. But if you can get it right in camera, it's obviously worthwhile. And better, obviously, in the long run, if you can, because of less editing and stuff. So, yeah, just trying to make her think, like, off on her toes kind of thing a little bit. So that worked really nicely. This shot here looks actually really good. Um, we'll have a look what it looks like in black and white as well, because I think it might be quite a good shot that uh, is, you know, sometimes a bit more impacting than, than colour. But I really liked it. I thought the idea of the actual, that tree was so such a dark green compared to all the light colour from behind where the sun was shining through. Um, it was obviously silhouetted as such, so the light was coming from behind the tree. We got a little bit of light spill coming through in front of the tree because the sun was relatively high in the sky. Um, and also there's a little bit of leaf cover as well still. Um, as we're going into autumn, they'll soon be gone. But as you can see, I'm talking about the small trees on the, on the right and the left there that she's going for. And that not to really bother with the ones on the far right because they're just sort of twigs really. So I was trying to say, you know, use five things. So you've got uneven numbers. So we've got a couple of big trees on the left, a couple of big trees on the right, and the centre um, 
tree which gives us our real subject. So hopefully that was um, you know, a good little learner for her there. And then we had a little wander around the other side. So we had a little walk around the path, carried on, didn't know really what we were going to find. We were still trying to find the whatever it was swimming across the lake, hopefully we were going to see it. Um, but it never never materialised again, which is a shame. So yeah, as we say, we walked around. There were some weird noises behind me. I presume it was just a squirrel. But yeah, I thought it might have been a deer or something, but there was plenty of squirrels around throwing um, acorns around, making loads of noise. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for now, see if I can see a deer. Anyway, we walked her through here, as you can see. Um, very, very pleasant place to, to have a little wander. And this is off the main path as well, so it's actually really quiet. It was so it was quite nice because we could hear the wildlife really clearly. Um, no people talking or anything like that, apart from us. And uh, yeah, it was just a nice, a nice day out. Perfect weather. Really cool. There was another small tree there. Anyway, we walked right round. As you can see, the sunlight is there coming through the trees. Um, yeah. So what I found with um, Charlotte knows what she wants to do. But obviously the technical side of things obviously didn't understand yet and it was basically a, i put her right in the deep end just to kind of see how she got on and to see if she really wanted to go any further than just having a camera that you could take pictures with in auto but she actually jumped on the the manual thing she actually suggested can we just go straight to the manual because i'd like to learn um how to do it properly rather than just being an auto i was like yeah totally but it is very different and it takes a long time to um kind of build that muscle memory so you you know what you need to do and you do it straight away um, without even really thinking and that's when it when you know you can use manual um, really really well so this is the other side of the tree and uh, as you can see there they're very very different colors because there's a lot more light onto it this side of the tree and just gave us a different look so yeah i just said well we'll take a picture here and you can see the difference between um, the other side where the light's coming from behind the tree to this side where the light is being lit by the tree So the uh, trees being lit by the Sun um, Yeah, so yeah, really really interesting. She got down on the ground this time. She wanted a different angle um, She's got the idea. It's really really cool. She's a little bit of a natural at it. Really really nice to uh, uh, See and obviously we know each other really well anyway, so we were just chat chatting all day all day long So that was really really good Really, she really enjoyed using the camera. Um, best thing about the RS10 is very responsive. Um, it works very, very well. The quality is very, very good. And it's a lot better than 95% of the cameras out there, I'd say, still today, even though it's a five-year-old camera. So, yeah, it's a lot more camera than she really needs, but it's one of those one-off purchases. She could buy it, and then she won't need to buy another camera for five, five years. Um, because most people aren't really, they're not, you know, if you're a professional and you're making money for it, you you always want to have the best kit for a particular amount of time, and then you upgrade it once it's been paid for. And everything. when you're, you know, an amateur or whatever you want to say, an enthusiast or whatever, yeah, it's really nice to have the up-to-date cameras and everything like that. But you don't necessarily need them. So the cameras out there today, five, ten years old, are amazing. Yep, some work differently than others. Yeah, the quality is better than others. But they do a very, very, very good job. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we carried on walking around, and just snapping away. And I was trying to get to do different things, like just use a bit of, um, what do you call it? Uh, a little bit of imagination, looking at things. So I was trying to get to look around and uh, always, always make sure you turn around and look from where you've been. Uh, that's one, always one good tip I always say. Look back from where you've been because you never know what you might see you might have walked straight past a a shot that could have been awesome and you know sometimes it's just the way it is so yeah anyway so we carried on walking around then we're looking up into the into the um the trees a little bit and thinking about trying to shoot into the sun so trying to get silhouettes trying to get um interesting backlit leaves uh, as you can see there it looks very nice and the, the sunlight and everything's coming through that tree really quite nicely and I was explaining to her about the different shutter speeds the aperture and how that affects the way the sunlight looks so if you stop it right down you end up with a starburst if you have it wide open obviously you end up with really soft light coming through and obviously shallow depth of field 
struggling with autofocus sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do and where you're trying to aim the camera. If you're shooting straight into the sun, it's going to struggle a little bit trying to um, hit focus. But if you're looking at a leaf to the left or the right, um, it's going to focus quite easily with no issues whatsoever. But as you can see here, the light was really lovely. And now we're just setting the camera up and trying to get what we wanted up in those trees there. So I was explaining to what settings she might need. I was just guessing on roughly what I knew it was going to be about right. And then she was going to aim up the camera, try and focus on something what she thought was nice. Um, take the picture, have a look at it and see if we need to do adjust anything. You know, do we need to slow the shutter speed down, open the aperture up, speed, speed the shutter speed up, or whatever. So yeah, really, really good. She did really, really well. And she grasped it really, really quickly as well, which was really nice. And she's probably forgotten most of it already. So we are going to go back out and do some more, which means our extend is going to be utilized a bit more. Um, she was smiling all day and she sent me a message later on um, saying that she was so happy with what how, how she got on with today. And she said it was such a really, really fun, lovely um, day and she really enjoyed it. So that's one thing that really makes a difference, you know, and photography itself, I've taught probably quite a few people over the years and after lockdown we had obviously lots of people with depression and things like that and struggling with um, things and I actually taught about three or four people um, how to use cameras and they it sort of turned them around it gave them a focus point um, to get out with the cameras and do things that were creative and everything like that and it really gave them a boost so photography for me is something that keeps me happy all day long um, because I'm being creative, you know, and I, I have seen it change people, which is really, really nice. And the fact that Charlotte was literally loving it, and she said, I can't believe how, how much fun it was, but also how much she was learning that day. So it's really, really cool. And just so pleased that I could actually give her, give her a little bit of knowledge. Obviously, I wasn't filling her brain with too much technical stuff. I was just showing her live on the screen what it did. So we were just kind of quite basic because you can literally blow someone's mind. Um, going into too much detail because you really need to learn and experiment yourself to make it, you know, make make you remember what you're doing. So, you know, this is what I'm explaining to her now. You know, if we do this, that, and the other, we're going to get this shot. If we do this, that, and the other, we're going to get that shot. And it's in anything in between. So now she's looking straight into the sun. This is where I wouldn't focus, obviously, because we're shooting straight into the sun. And then she's moving the camera around until she found somewhere that she could actually see and then recomposed and took a shot. Um, what she got there. So she's looking at the leaf there by the looks of it. Um, yeah, so really, really cool shots. She, yeah, took it in just dried. I'm actually looking forward to getting back out there. So Sheffield Park in October is the best time to go. Mid-October, you have to book um, in advance. And it just gets overcrowded. The problem is it gets so many photographers there all snapping. There's actually, it's quite difficult to get the shots you want because there's people everywhere. So I tend to go the week after or the week before uh, and hopefully get in there and the colours are there a little bit to get the best shots. But anyway, so on to the next bit. So guys, here are some of Charlotte's photos that she's taken. So these are unedited, straight out of camera. Uh, some are shot in auto. So this was shot in auto. Um, looks okay, um, but not all that impressive. Um, compared to that, which is shot in fully manual. So I was just trying to show her the difference between auto and manual. Yeah, auto does work, but if you can get it in manual, the camera comes alive completely. Uh, just quick apologies for the audio. My microphone died, so I'm using the laptop microphone, so it's not brilliant. Um, so hopefully it still sounds okay, but apologies. Um, as you can see here, a couple of other shots. Uh, this leaf here, shot in auto. Not brilliant. Uh, so it works okay. But then you suddenly see the difference when you start shooting in manual and actually controlling the light yourself. Um, you can see a real difference in the sharpness, the background, the way it looks, and everything like that. So it was just a learning curve, trying to teach her as much as I could, but without blowing her mind. Uh, swans, what swans? Geese, um, right down the other end of the lake. She got onto that pretty well. I was showing her where and how to use the uh, focus points, etc. Uh, another shot in auto, looks okay, looks sharp. Looks nice, 
just a little tweak shooting in manual slightly faster shutter speed and you the colors just come alive just looks a little bit nicer to the eye so yeah you can use the exposure um, adjustment dial um, if you want to in, in auto but I tend to just shoot manual um, she managed to get the shot of the swans which was really impressive I didn't realize she got one but there's two swans basically came flying over last second and um, I got some with the A1 and she did actually get one shot which is cool didn't actually know she really got it a couple other shots here I'm just putting the shots in here that didn't quite work and this is just to show her that you know she just needed to stand back a bit or zoom out a little bit with the RS10 and she would have got the shot really really cool um, just watching the exposure on swans are a nightmare because they're so white that they can either be underexposed on one side and overexposed on the other so that shot was a little bit over in a couple of spots this this shot here is slightly better um, still a tad on the, the bum there but that's why it's great shooting in raw because you've got so much control you can drop the whites down or the highlights down to bring that back in to uh, play so hopefully um, that's all shot here this one leaped out of the water obviously she was zoomed in too much and didn't react fast enough to the the way it was moving but that's again just the learning curve so it's not negative it's just showing her um that you obviously need to move the camera a bit quicker if you're gonna you know if it's gonna jump out of the water um that's what happens you kind of need to move quickly to uh you know get the shot really like this really fluffy it puffed itself up um it looked really really cool um, this shot here really really good shot actually um, shooting in heavy shade I mean we were well in the sort of shade so to actually get that shot in fact I failed with the A1 um, I was using the 135 but um, I actually struggled to get to focus on it and obviously it was quite a long way away but she got a fantastic shot there this shot here was actually a leaf that's you can just about see the um, the spider web there it was just hanging in the air there's one of the shots with the uh, trees. So the first one she took where she said it was a little bit overexposed on the grass, which you can see. And then she adjusted the camera till it looked right to her and how much nicer that looks, much more flattering. The other one doesn't look bad, but this one just looks much, much nicer. Here's the tree shot that I was talking about. So the big tree on the left-hand side looks huge. It works okay. Um, but having no tree like that, really i think just makes the difference that becomes the real subject both really good shots but personally i would do this because it really brings out the fact that it's just that tree and this is from around the other side where you can see the tree is now lit um, by the sun um but it's a much messier um, area so it didn't really work shooting up into the sun now so we've got some really beautiful bokeh and the way she managed to capture the the leaf there with the hole in uh, with the light casting through and then this is the difference between shooting directly with the sun right behind the camera well, right behind the leaf sorry heavy silhouette gives an interesting look but the other shot works much much better so on to the acorns here um, shooting with a little bit of flash so I was just showing her the difference between having an auto with flash and then having a manual with flash and then basically zooming in a little bit more and cutting down our angle of view with flash again which it is kind of quite a flat image otherwise and then no flash um, which you'll see in a second but still keeping our exposure the same so basically with no flash it just looks so much nicer doesn't it a little bit of light casting onto it still very sharp shooting at f4 at 600 mil um, and this shot here was just teaching her about framing so using these leaves here around the outside edge we're shooting off from under a little tree uh, branches and everything with the uh, the big house in the distance difference now shooting on auto looking down at a leaf giving you an even exposure you think okay it looks okay and then shooting in, in manual really bringing out the uh, the whites of the leaf you can see the water droplets clearly and the the, uh, the water around it, which is quite dirty suddenly it loses it's it's uh, dirtiness and it's just dark and in fact with a little bit of editing you could literally sort that out um random bird she spotted which is basically matches the colors of the lilies and everything there really cool shot of the big flowers um i think they're lily flowers i'm not sure what they're called exactly I'm sure someone will be able to tell me uh really nice this shot here the duck was coming straight at her perfect reflection i mean what else can i say uh, really really cool shot it's just a shame the sun went in so Shooting in manual, but unfortunately the light had changed slightly. Like I said, these haven't been edited. They're straight out of the camera. So there's plenty of scope for increasing the exposure a little bit if you need to, or the shadows or the highlights. 
these two ducks are having a bit of a I think they're on a hot date um, which is quite funny which you'll see at the end of the video uh, but yeah really well caught I thought that one and this one just shows you the difference between uh, sea, the seagull on the right hand side which is quite a long way about a meter further away than the seagull on the left hand side which is well out of focus and that just shows you the depth of field difference this shot she's really pleased with I remember um, capturing the duck having a um, they're almost like a conductor of an orchestra I think when they do that this one I absolutely love I think it's a fantastic shot the colors the textures of the, the ducks um, feathers and everything just looks awesome just well captured really nice shot uh, dragonflies everywhere absolutely everywhere and yeah yeah just capture them everywhere that was right on top of a bush this one another shot here uh, really nice shot actually um, but it shows you their camouflage with all the colors and everything of the plants around and how they can actually hide away if they need to and this is what I was saying uh, to Charlotte basically if you zoom right out and actually with this massive tree stump it looks straight down it looks straight down and you shoot photograph your shoes think outside the box a little bit this shot here is at 600 mil just showing her the difference what this the camera can do but the fact that at 600 millimeters you can literally shoot quite close to plants little flowers and then you can go wide angle and still get pictures of the flowers but we're almost touching those flowers at wide angle. Um, it's just a shame that the lens has a bit of a dead area in sort of mid-range that you can't really focus on stuff closely. So you have to either have to be both ways, you know, wide or in maximum zoom. Uh, some dragonflies mating, I presume. Um, shooting ducks in the shade. The lighting actually on the head is really quite nice. Um, but other than that, it's a little bit of a dark shot. This shot here, she took about 10, I think. Um, and got one eventually. This thing was a little bugger because it kept flying away and coming back, flying away and coming back. And it was quite hard to capture it, but she did really, really well. I sneaked a shot of Charlotte taking pictures. I need to teach her how to hold the camera a bit better, holding the lens um, underneath to support the camera. But she was doing brilliantly, and I didn't want to uh, you know, give her too many things extra to think about. Here's some of the shots from the A1. So there's a couple of shots here with um, what I've taken with the 135G Master, uh, just to show you. There's a, that shot there almost fell in because I had to hold the camera up above my head to try and get the sunlight onto uh, in the reflection of the water there. Here's a picture of that same robin. There was loads of them flying around, a couple of young ones, which we missed, which is a real shame. Um, but, you know, can't have everything, can we? Swan. Again, this is where I've shot in raw, and I have actually adjusted this slightly just to bring down the highlight. So it was it's not overexposed, but it was a little bit too bright. Messy eaters, these things. And uh, he was dribbling muddy water out of his mouth and bits of grass and good as well. As well. But it's still quite a cool shot there. And duck, was it water off a duck's back? That's literally water off a duck's back. Literally super dry, got absolutely soaked, and then it's dry in half a second. Absolutely amazing to look at when they did that. And those those dragonflies having a mating um, session, shall we say. Oh yeah, went diving. Oh, it's a moorhen. I think it's a moorhen. Just went down. I oh, know, it's hilarious. See the, they've seen the moorhen here, the black one, he's just gone under again. They're blowing bubbles. <laughs> oh, he's come back up. Look at this, it's straight below. Down that rock. Yeah. Oh, he's gone. Is he gone? Yep. Is he coming back? Anyway, guys, I know it's a bit of a long one, but I just wanted to put sort of put some pictures out there and everything for Charlotte to actually watch. So, if anybody else has watched this, thank you very much, and hopefully it might help some few people. This obviously was a lesson, but more of an in, a first insight into photography, so she could learn the basics um, with the camera straight away, with no written paperwork or you know anything like that so yeah she did really really well and absolutely came away smiling from ear to ear as such so really really good she's going to be back out with me again and i may do a bit more video next time it was just a case i didn't really want to have a camera stuck in her face all the time you know just to put her off and everything so anyway um don't forget to click the subscribe button little notification bell as well and we shall see you soon with some new videos and uh, lots of other things happening as well. So, see you soon. Bye.